Today we're going to be taking a look at this new all-purpose cleaner from Autoglim. Now this is a grab-and-go solution for those of you who don't have a lot of time or patience with things like diluting a product down. This is something you can pick up off the shelf straight away and you can use it on a wide range of surfaces including the interior and exterior and throughout the video I'm going to be covering some of the things that this can and can't do. All-purpose cleaners have been around since I can remember and they definitely became a favourite for customers in the trade and that's because they have so many uses and they always come in handy for those moments where you may all of a sudden run out of a pre-wash or an interior cleaner and this APC costs around £15 for one litre however their trade APC costs £25 for five litres Yep, you do the maths. So this is definitely not aimed at those in the business because it's just not going to be cost effective however if you are somebody who doesn't have a lot of knowledge on car cleaning and you're not particularly too bothered about going for perfection with things like removing all the fallout off the paintwork or you want to remove all the brake dust from the wheels, you're going to find that something like this may actually be more beneficial for you. And this is my Audi TT. This is the car that I want to be working on today. I want to put the products to the test, especially on the inside because I still haven't even touched it yet. I bought this car about a month and a half ago and as you can see it is filthy. It has been smoked in, there's cigarette marks and burns on it in the interior but I still think we have a lot of potential here to really brighten this up. It's going to be a great test subject for today's video. The problem you'll find with all purpose cleaners is nowadays there's so many to choose from and they all have different strengths and weaknesses. And you will find that some may end up destroying the trim, so my best advice is always do your research. But the cheap ones may look good on paper, but in the long run they could cost you dearly. But here's the thing, because this product is already diluted to the right requirements, it doesn't mean that it's going to be too heavy, it's not going to be too weak. It's just going to be able to do a good job, it's as simple as that. No, it's not going to be able to remove things like brake dust on your wheels, but it will be able to clean them up. And again with the leather, yes you can use it on the leather, but you shouldn't be using it every single day of the week. This is a once off, a once a year maybe at best, deep clean process that you're going to be using it on. If you use too much all-purpose cleaner and leather, you're going to dry it out, it's going to crack and it's going to age a lot quicker. Okay, so the first thing I would like to tackle in this video will be the petrol cap. I believe this all-purpose cleaner should have no problems at all taking care of all that dirt in there. As for the wheels and tyres, it will be able to make them look slightly better. I'm not going to say that we're going to get perfect results here, but I'm interested to see how far we can go with it. As for the door shuts, this is bang on the money. This is what you're going to be wanting to get rid of some of that grease. So the weather's looking quite promising out there now. So we're going to take the Audi out and I'm going to test this on as many things as possible. We're going to do the petrol cap, the door shuts, the wheels, tyres, arches. We're going to be using it on the lower third of the vehicle as a pre-wash. We're also going to use it on the rubber mats, the Alcantara seats, the leather around the seats. We're going to use it on the trim and we're going to use it on anything else we can possibly find. Bearing in mind I've got one litre of this product, so hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to be enough. Let's try it on the grabbiest wheel first. For the front wheels, I'm just spraying, dwelling and pressure washing off, so no agitation. And as you can see, it's doing a pretty good job on its own, with the exception of the areas that I didn't blast. The rear left was probably the cleanest wheel, so I did exactly the same process and as you can imagine without the heavy brake dust on, the APC had no problem shifting it. For the front left I sprayed and dwelled but this time I brushed the wheels and tyres, which is what you should do anyway, even with wheel cleaner. And honestly it foamed up so well which was excellent to see. Afterwards I went round the wheels again because I couldn't just leave them like that. So once I'd finished I then jumped onto the petrol cap. So all I'm doing is spraying and brushing in around the cap area so I'm not doing anything special. And then it was just followed up by a nice easy rinse afterwards with the Arva P70. For both the door shuts and the engine bay shut I copied the same technique as the petrol cap with a simple spray and a brush and the APC did manage to break down some of the light grease as expected but not the heavy stuff. And if you pressure wash around the outside of the engine bay just take extra care in case of any sensitive electrical components. 
Once I was fully satisfied the cleaner did its job, I decided to take a risk and use this as I would with any other citrus pre-wash, and I sprayed around the lower third of the Aldi and let it dwell for about a minute, as believe it or not the sun was trying to dry it out pretty quickly. For this test I'm actually rinsing the chemical from bottom to top, and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to see how effective the APC is by the time you've added more pressure and water to the equation. So I just wanted to see the cleaning effects in the higher parts of the car, if any. And yes, I know people will say that you're supposed to rinse top down, but for this part of the experiment this is the way it has to be done. Okay, so now I've rinsed off the APC, we're going to go against the rule book here and we're going to allow it to dry. This isn't something I would normally recommend, but on this occasion, that's what we're doing. I don't want to start snow foaming it or shampooing it at this stage because that's going to interfere with the results. I want to see how good this really is. So it's starting to dry off now, as you can see, it's taken off the heavier chunks of dirt, but it has left this pale film around the lower third of the car. And normally you would never do this anyway, you'd go for the proper wash. So you'd snow foam it afterwards and then give it two bucket method. So you wouldn't be dealing with any of this anyway, but it just gives you a rough idea that if you were a beginner and you thought that this was going to be the only solution for your car, it isn't. Whereas if you look at the door shuts where I've given them a really good scrub, they've actually come out pretty well. But all in all, door shuts are pretty good. Looking at the wheel, it looks okay. It's definitely not the best. I still think a tire cleaner could whoop it hands down, but that's not the idea of this product. This product is simply just to be as versatile as possible. With the exterior inspection complete, I went through the process of giving the car a good decom wash. So I'm using a shampoo called Wax Off and I'm using this through the Arva Premium Foam Cannon just to strip away any old waxes as I will be giving this car a proper detail soon. Moving on to the rubber mats now and for this I'm not pre-rinsing them. I'm simply spraying and allowing a few minutes to dwell before scrubbing them with a dedicated tyre brush. I have to say the way this foams up is absolutely brilliant. Once again I'm rinsing off the APC and it will be interesting for you to see later on in the video what happens with these mats. As some of you may know that APCs can turn black rubber mats dull. Right, so we've finished the outside, we're just going to get this thing dry now and then we're going to move on to the inside and just see how many different uses we can possibly fit in with this one product. So normally when you wash a car, under no circumstances would you spray the lower third with something like an APC, give it a rinse and leave it and just say, oh, I'm done, it's an all-purpose cleaner. Surely it's jobs to clean the car. Its job is primarily to assist with the cleaning. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna remove absolutely everything. Okay, so we're gonna be starting on the interior now and more to the point that Alcantara seats. Now, instead of using an AquaDry, which is basically a synthetic leather, which is what Autoglim recommend, I'm going to be using a scrub pad and I'm going to be using some microfiber cloths. These cloths are from a company called Microfiber and they happen to be some of the best value cloths you can buy in the UK right now. With 40 pieces setting you back around £22, making them more cost effective than the commonly used Kirkland microfibers. So the first thing I'm going to do is spray a scrub pad. Not going to use lots, just a few squirts. Going to rub it in and now I'm going to gently start working it over the Alcantara. Now, I don't know what to expect here. I'm not hoping for miracles, but I'm optimistic. And this is a good car to work on because it needs a lot of work done to it. And I quite enjoy a challenge. And if it goes wrong, I don't care, it's my car. I don't know if you can see, but on the camera here, this is completely shredded. Now, I haven't touched this at all yet. This is the first time I'm ever touching it. So I don't know what the heck has happened here but I don't think it can get any worse. When cleaning Alcantara, it's a good idea not to oversaturate them and try to avoid heavy excessive rubbing. And I know the previous owner did take it through hand car washes, so it may explain some of that bobbling. My ultimate goal here was just to remove some of these white spots in the seats, and it's actually done that. Now it says here very importantly, for leather, vinyl and hard surfaces, apply to an Autoglin microfiber cloth or a sponge, and wipe over the surface to be cleaned. Do not use a brush and avoid excessive scrubbing. I've got my clean damp towel, I'll stick that there in the middle, and I've got my dry towel, which I'm gonna gently spray some Autoglim all-purpose cleaner on. And I'm gonna go lightly over the leather, and 
this lever is old, it's cracked and it's dirty. So this is probably not gonna be the best example because I'm gonna have limitations here as to what I can do, but it might still come up quite nice. So I'm gonna go against the rule book again here and I'm gonna use a scrub pad. And there's not a massive difference between a microfiber cloth and a scrub pad, but if you haven't got any, I recommend that you get some immediately because they speed up the cleaning process. They get in all the little grooves and it just makes your life so much easier. That is lovely. So I'm now gonna take my damp towel and just dab it. The seats did come up well, but I'd always advise that you condition them afterwards if you do go down the route of using an APC. Personally, I wouldn't though, but I do understand that some of you may be happy just doing that. So now let's try it on these dirty plastics and let's see if it can really rejuvenate this piece of interior trim. Let's give it a quick squirt. One, two, three, four, five. Super educational today. I'm helping you count. I've got my brush. I'm just gonna start off by seeing how foamy it is. That's not bad, you know. That foams up pretty well, to be fair. Look at that. So interestingly enough, the scent on this is a zest orange and it's not too bad. It does smell like a very industrial product. It doesn't smell fresh and fruity like you might possibly think when you see the word zest orange. I mean, that's just constantly foaming. That's, that's pretty impressive. We're then gonna take the damp towel, take that and just wipe it away. Let's see what we're left with here. Follow it up with the dry towel. Yep, yeah, like that one. That's a nice, crisp, clean finish. All you'd need to do really for it now is just put a nice interior detailer on. As it happens, actually, I've got one I'm gonna put on in a minute. Yeah, really pleased with that one. So I'm finishing off the trim here with another new product which has just come out. And this is Infinity Wax's interior detailer, which as you can see, it's really helped improve the appearance. With the test piece looking as good as new, it's time to talk about engine bay maintenance. Personally, for engine bay cleaning, all I'm gonna recommend is that you cover up all the important parts, give it a simple spray and a brush when the engine's cool, of course, and wipe it over with a damp cloth and then follow it up with a dry one if you like. Apart from that, you don't really need to use it anywhere else. I mean, it's great on all the plastics. It's definitely enhancing it. An engine bay cleaning is a lot more simple than people think, but I imagine that if you were just gonna use this on one car, for example, for a big clean, you're probably gonna get through that whole one liter bottle, especially when you've used it on the trim, used it on the lever, used it on the engine bay, you've used it on pretty much everything you can imagine. One of these may not be enough. That is looking pretty good, I would say. And I wanna give you a quick little story because when I first started car cleaning, let's rewind the clock back 16 years now, we always started off with a product called G101 for the trade, which was basically an APC from a company called AutoSmart. Back then, we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have anything. We just had this product. It just did everything, basically. We used it pretty much like I've done today on the wheels, tires, arches, and everything on the interior. And I remember back then thinking, okay, maybe if I use a little bit more chemical, I'm gonna have better cleaning power and everything's gonna make my life a lot easier. I remember having black mats in particular like this. I would spray them with a 50-50 mix. Don't judge me now because this is a long time ago I did this, right? We all live and learn. And I remember that it turned pretty much completely white afterwards and it was such a horrible finish. But then I think about it now and the more I think about it, the more stuff like this makes sense because, all right, it's 15 pounds for about one liter, I think it is, but you can grab it, you can use it straight away. You haven't got to worry about anything staining. You haven't got to worry about black rubber mats turning white. You don't have to worry about all the faffing with your dilutions. And if you're somebody who's an enthusiast, who doesn't want to get all the measuring jugs and all that out, I can totally understand why you would go and buy something like this. And also bear in mind there's places like Halfords now that always do three for two on car cleaning products, especially Autoglim. I know it may seem a little bit expensive because you're just gonna be using it straight out the bottle, but there is one liter there and I think people tend to just presume that because it's in a handheld bottle, it's 500 mils. No, it's the equivalent of two standard bottles that you would get with anything else. So it's not a total deal breaker. And to be fair, that looks pretty good. In that brief moment, I said this product wouldn't cause staining. However, what I didn't say is if it's used incorrectly, this will cause staining because this is where the experiment may take a turn. 
Let me explain. So this is very interesting because when I was spraying the APC around the lower third, one thing I did was soak the lights. Now these were quite faded anyway. I mean, they do really need a proper restoration and I will feature that in another video. But on this occasion, I soaked them so much and I left this car in the sun. I wanted to see what would happen. This has started to go quite faded, really dull. I can't believe that. I might even have to just polish some of that up now just to make this even road legal. Now by doing this, I'm trying to get you in this mindset that if you are a beginner and you go a bit OTT and you don't carry out the proper methods, you're going to cause some damage. If you see it as an all purpose cleaner, yes, it will be able to do many different things. But one huge problem is if you use it incorrectly, it will absolutely ruin your paintwork. So you do have to learn these methods before you go out just chucking any product on willy nilly. And that's why I say to you guys, always make sure you subscribe to these videos because you're going to learn things like this to stop this from happening. Now, speaking of the headlights, we are going to be making a dedicated video on headlight restoration. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you love more videos like this, don't forget to check out this one right here.